Hi there traders, my name's Braden and welcome to Trade the Structure. Now, I bet when we first start out, we all have the same grand ideas about trading, how much money we're gonna make, we can retire early, it's gonna be nice and easy. We're just gonna do what Bob down the road is doing and we'll make heaps of, problem is what Bob doesn't tell you is how many losses he's having as well, okay? And once the reality kicks in and we realize it's not quite as easy and simple, and we're not quite making those money to go and retire as what we first thought, then, a lot of people do give up and they become part of that 90% of traders that fail. What I firmly believe, it's about the process, okay, and how you deal with your process and how consistently you can implement that process to become part of that 10% that consistently win and consistently drag money out of the market. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the plan, and it's part of my process, and I feel that not enough people actually put it into their process, okay? Planning out a trade, planning out a market. Now, there's a few key aspects which we'll talk about also uh, of what I look for. So I trade the Hang Seng, I do trade the Nikkei, sometimes trade the SPY 200, and occasionally I trade the DAX and the Dow uh, later on in the evening. So I'm normally around the Asian market session. Um, now, there is quite a few things that I put into my plan uh, and there's a few key aspects and every market has them. They have their own key aspects, their own key intricacies, I guess you could say. But I put that into my plan and I know exactly what I'm looking for. So when I plan out my trade, I've got my key levels that I want to work from. I know everything that I want to do. And if something changes, I might have to replan during the session. But generally, when I go into a session, I know my key levels, I know what I expect to see, and then I trade it accordingly. What we'll do, I'll go through a trade that I had today on the Hang Seng. Uh, we'll take a look at the plan, and then what we'll do is take a look at the outcome and, and what I was actually looking for to happen. Okay, so stick around, and we'll show you more in just a moment. Now, don't forget to go to the YouTube channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that notification button so you get all the new videos as they come out each week. Time to get into it. What we've got on the screen here is the Hang Seng, okay? So this was the action from overnight in the US session. So the Hang Seng underlying physical index closes at around 6 p.m. Sydney time, which you can see I've just marked up here. And then it'll close in the morning at 5 a.m. Sydney time. So that's the action I'm interested in. You can see it was actually quite strong. Now that was, that was a lot stronger than other markets. It was unusual, okay, to see when the Dow was trading high. Dow was actually chopping around a bit. You've got other markets like the ASX 200 or the SPY was up, but it wasn't as strong as that. Uh, the same with the Nikkei. So there's quite a few markets that were sort of dawdling around. They did edge higher, but it was unusual to see that the, the Hang Seng was quite strong or a lot stronger than other markets over that same period. All right. So what I would do is take note of that and I would take a look at basically, okay, from when it closed. Okay, we're looking about here. This is when the index closes because what I'm trying to look for is when the index closed, how much does the actual futures market or the CFD in this case, does it go up or down? Okay, so that's what I'm trying to analyze. So if we go from here when it was basically uh, at the six o'clock close and we go up to where it actually closed at 5 a.m., you can see it rallied at 400 points. We've got just marked up there. So that was a 400 point rally. It was a really, really strong rally. So now what I'd do is go along to the underlying index and just mark up where it would take us if we do pop up 400 points. Uh, you're going to expect a gap open as well. So that's kind of a key thing. Uh, you know, you want to see where the index is going to open it. And is there any key levels around that? Okay, so this is all part of me planning out what I expect to see. Well, let's get over to the index now. So you can see this is the actual action for today. Now, this is where it closed the previous session. So if we just go mark out like I normally would, uh, that's where it closed. If we just drag it up to about 400 points, say, uh, there you go, 390, 400 points. That's about 400 points, 396. But you can see that's where I expected it to open. So I've got levels that have marked up there and I might go through and just mark up levels from previously. I'll keep them on there. If it's not significant anymore, I'll take them off. If there's something else that's come out that is more significant where I expect some action, I'll go and mark them up. And what you could see is this level here was quite significant. You can see there's dynamic resistance, you'd call it. And you can see it was just gonna open up. By my analysis, I can see, okay, the futures market was quite strong. They pushed it up around the 400 point mark from that six o'clock PM close to that 5 AM close. And if we go mark that out, that four, uh, 400 points takes us up towards that resistance zone. So what I'd be looking for from there, uh, what I normally mark up is my plan, okay? So what do I wanna see once it opens? I know that it's gonna open potentially just below a resistance zone. So I would go mark it up on my plan. I'd get my, uh, my charts, mark up what I wanna see and sort of the price section. So the next step is, is to go in and plan out the CFD and put the levels on there to see where I want to trade, okay? And where it actually takes us. Let's just do that now. 
So this is basically the final product or the finished product. So you've got, this is that same action that we've marked up uh, that I've shown you. So that's the 400 point rally from basically where a day session closed to where the night session closed. Okay, so that's the 400 point rally. Uh, we've got our significant levels of marked up on where I'm interested in the market. Now this is at the 5 p.m., sorry, the 5 a.m. close. And that's about where the market finished. It finished pretty much on its highs. It did back off there. That was into the US close, but that was kind of the action. I'm not too interested in that action. It's around that 5 a.m. close that I'm really interested in. Okay, and you can see that market was quite strong. Like I said, it was unusually strong compared to other markets. And we know that that's going to take us up into a resistance zone on the underlying index. So I tend to look at that a lot as well. So what you'll see, I've marked out the high. Okay, I've marked out a support zone where it's come through um, around that 2380. And so they're the sort of two levels where I expect it's going to open up around there somewhere. And we're just going to see what happens. All right. And what I'm looking for is if generally I love to see when it pops up through a, just to take out some stops and it's going to trap some traders. So it tends to go through a, you know, a high, a major high, a minor high or something. And the same on the reverse. It goes through a minor support, a major support. And if it wants to trap some traders, it'll flush through it and bounce straight back again. And, you know, straight through the top side, it'll flush through it and bounce back below it again. OK, and that's what I marked up there. Now I've marked up the opportunity where if it actually goes through, pulls back, holds and goes. I want to trade on the upside if it starts to hold a high low. I want to trade to the downside if it flushes up through there and we start to hold lower highs or if it just starts to come straight down. OK, and we get through this bottom level at 2380, we hold a lower high and we start to kick on with it. All right, so that's my plan of attack. I've got everything marked out. I know what the market did overnight. I know where we're going to roughly open on the underlying index and then from there, it's just a matter of sitting back, watching the open and see what price action starts to play out. So what you can see, this is that 2510 level. If we just go back to the, that's it, just that um, that top level there, 2510, where it closed, uh, closed around here. So that was the, uh, the action from later on. It was, this is the close there at 5 a.m. Okay, so you can see that I've marked that out. We've brought it across. And then you can see the market open, opens at 11.15 um, on the, the futures market. And then it's 11.30. Uh, it's about this candle here when the underlying market opens and you can see it was quite strong out of the bat so one of our scenarios is that it sort of pushed up above the um the resistance zone or pushed up above those highs what it's doing there is bringing in some buyers buyers see that uh, then get trapped and then you know it comes back and flushes back down again because we know uh, like i was saying on the underlying index was going to gap up quite strong okay so it was going to be nice strong so there's a good chance into resistance we're going to grind up into that resistance which we did exactly that with this price action. It kept grinding up, grinding up. You can see the higher lows, higher lows. And then we're just looking to see, okay, if there's an opportunity, it can flush straight back down again. All right, so the actual trades, a couple of trades I did, then what actually played out, I let it go and we saw this market start to come down. So this is the first sort of move where you think, okay, things are gonna start to fail here. All right, there's a good chance that we're gonna start to fail. What I'm always looking at and what I'm looking for is a lower high to come into play okay the lower high i want to be below my ema so if you've been following for a while uh watching youtube i'll talk a lot about my high lows lower highs your shoulders we call them and that's where we want to trade especially on the one minute time frame and i'm trading from the five minute setup as well okay the five minute price action so you can see that's where it come into play we've got this shoulder holding so there's you know a couple of minutes down so it's what's one two three four five six minutes straight down then we paused back into that zone again so that's that 25 10 area and it had one, two, three, four sort of indecision candles. And as soon as we started to flush up here and rejected, and the very next candle started coming down, basically I let that close, jumped in here, and wrote it down to there. So basically, I think I took some off for about 40 points, 44 points, somewhere in here. And the rest of it just took out about 90. I think it was 90 in the end. So the partial at 44 and the rest of it 90. And that was it. Okay, all done for the day. And luckily enough, it actually started to base out here, started to pop up. And since then, you can see it's just started to press back above that 2510 area. Okay, but all I'm interested in was that initial move, uh, initial thrust, we thought from the um, the gap up, that strong gap up into the index into a resistance level, there's a chance that it's going to try to trap some traders you know, on the long side. They're going to gap up. It's not going to come down like they expect. It keeps pushing, 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 and that drags in some buyers. They're eager. They think it's going to kick on through the resistance zone. And then I'm looking for that more of a gap fill kind of a play, which played out beautifully. Okay, so you can see that we had our plan that was pretty much um, this green plan here popped above probably went a bit further than that obviously and then we just trading off that lower high okay so that's everything that's pretty much how i would prep the market okay with my levels i would prep the market with what i'm trying to see where i expect it to open and what levels i want to trade off and what sort of price action i want to trade off okay okay so this is really good to have as a bit of a reminder too when you you forget what you're looking for you get a bit confused bring up your plan 
Okay, that still applies. That's great. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, just as a bit of a jog your memory if you're having a bad day. But anyway, it turned out to be a really good day, all done and dusted after probably, you know, not even halfway through the session. It was at the start of the session. So that's it. That's all I want to talk to you guys. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you.